Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, beloved, I want to welcome you to this uh, week's episode of Glowing Podcasts. Um, and that's the official podcast channel of Global Emancipation Ministries, uh, Calgary, Canada. I want to bless the name of the Lord for preserving our lives still yet another week in the land of the living. We give him all the praise, honor, and adoration for his love, for his uh, tender mercies, for his preservation, for his provision and protection. It's because the Lord has been good to us, that's why we can still be alive to witness this particular week. And in the, in the name of the Lord, be glorified for that in the name of Jesus. I want to appreciate you for taking time to also listen to this uh, podcast uh, channel. If you are not there, if you are not there listening, there will not be any point presenting. So I want to appreciate you for taking time to uh, listen to this and want to also appreciate you for applying uh, the word of God. There's only one way to prove if, if the word of God is potent or not. There's only one way to prove if the word of God works or not. And the only way is to apply. If you don't apply, you won't know whether it is actually true or not. So I want to believe you have been applying the principles the Lord has been making available to you via this uh, channel. And uh, it's a uh, belief that you're also recording testimonies based on your application. And for those who uh, will be deciding to start applying going forward, it's a prayer that your testimonies will manifest speedily also in the name of Jesus. Uh, so yeah, it's... Um, a mandate is still liberating men through the knowledge of the truth, as you know. And uh, we, you can subscribe to this podcast channel on different listening platforms depending on the device you use or probably depending on your choice. So we want to encourage you, if you have not yet subscribed, to uh, just type in Gloem Podcast in your Google search box. Type in Gloem Podcast and click on search. It's going to bring up different platforms where you can subscribe and listen to this uh, podcast uh, channel i mean the episodes being uh, released via this channel um that way you will not be able to miss out on any uh fresh episode the lord might be bringing your way to just keep getting delivered to you based on the uh, subscription and when i say subscription is actually free you're not paying any am- any amount of money it's just that you don't want to miss out on any particular uh, episode so i want to encourage you to do that and uh, if you have not done so already and also to um uh, inform your friends, family members, uh, you know, tell other people about the channel so they can subscribe as well and get blessed the way you have been getting blessed. Uh, the Lord will bless you mightily as you do that in the name of Jesus. Uh, if you wish to learn more about this ministry the Lord has given to us, uh, this uh, Global Emancipation Ministry, all you need to do is to visit our website at www.clem.org. That's www.gloem.org. You'll be able to have access to every information you want to know about us and even if you need more the phone number is there you can just reach out to us uh, or send us an email i'll be able to let you we'll respond to you and let you know whatever else you wish to know uh, also we are on social media so you can follow us on our social media uh, platforms you can check us out on facebook twitter instagram uh, LinkedIn and all these social media platforms available to you. You know, we want you to like our pages, uh, follow us, connect with us so that you can also keep abreast of spiritual updates as they become available on these platforms, especially to be able to access the daily word of God, daily meditation that is being shared on these uh, platforms on a daily basis. As you take advantage of all these wonderful opportunities to get blessed, the Lord will really bless you indeed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, it's uh, another week, and uh, another week means another episode. And uh, today, the Lord will definitely be blessing us again by His Word. So, if you don't mind, let's just take a moment and commit this session to the hands of the Lord in prayer before we go into the episode proper. Uh, so, join me, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege given to us to be among the living. And thank you so much for preserving our lives, uh, preserving our salvation, preserving uh, preserving us in all we do up to this moment. Lord, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you for this, uh, your children who have been listening uh, to this uh, uh, podcast channel. I want to appreciate you for giving them understanding of your word 
and thank you for all the beautiful things you have been doing in their lives thanks for the feedback thank you for their testimonies lord accept our thanks over this once in the name of jesus and it's on that note lord that we commit this uh, fresh episode into your hands so lord you're going to speak to us again you're going to give, give us a uh, fresh insight into your word you're going to open up our eyes that we may build wondrous things out of your law lord open our eyes in this speak to us give us understanding so that by the time this session is over we'll look back and have all the cost to glorify your name thank you so much for always answering our prayers in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen and amen so welcome once again to this week's episode of glenn podcast and today we're going to be looking at the bondage of religion the topic we're going to be considering in this uh, week's episode is the bondage of religion uh, we're going to be taking our text from john chapter 8 we're going to look at john the gospel according to saint john chapter 8 we'll read verse 31 uh, through 36 we're going to be reading from john chapter 8 and we'll be reading 31 to 36 um, for the purpose of this episode i'll be reading from the king james version all right says then said jesus to those jews who believed on him if ye continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are we be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed Uh, may the lord bless his words in our heart in jesus name we are looking at the bondage of religion and uh, the text we have just read is john chapter 8 31 to 36 and we actually read it from the king james version now it's very important for me to quickly state at this very junction that religion doesn't guarantee liberation only Jesus can set you free. Religion doesn't guarantee a life of freedom. Religion doesn't guarantee freedom from bondage. Only Jesus can set you free. That's why it says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed freedom is not a function of religious practices freedom liberation from bondage is a function of being in contact with jesus now in religion men devise means by which they can relate with god or probably they are small g god in some uh, in some cases they come up with certain practices and uh, that make them feel they are close to their deity okay they follow all manners of rules just to get the approval of god or their small g god you know uh they do this they do that they observe some seasons they observe some uh period maybe there's a way the moon is there's a way the sun is uh there are some some even have some symbols some have some animals they feel if they can pray to those animals uh the animals can actually connect them to their uh, to deity to god you know people in fact religion is all about men trying to find means by which they can relate with the higher power in this case god everyone knows there is a higher power somewhere right there are some people don't like it to call it god they don't like to call the higher power god uh, say there's one higher power some there uh, there's a guy upstairs some people say there are some people call god a guy upstairs okay god have mercy say there's one guy upstairs uh they say there's one uh, super being one supreme being some people even call him universe i don't care what you call him everyone knows there is someone in charge of this planet someone who is making certain things to happen and they want to relate with that someone and they begin to come up with different practices some they do it by chanting some things 
you know some have to sit down at a particular time and just you know face face the sun and make some chanting religion is all about men trying to find means by which they can relate with god but christianity is totally different that's why i i tell people if you have ever listened to me i talk about christianity i refuse to call it a religion to me christianity is not a religion it's totally different from what i've just described in religion men are trying to look for god they know he's there they are trying to find ways to please him find ways to to get his attention to connect with him some go through all manners of things to get to god but in christianity like i said it's totally different we don't look for god he's the one looking for us <laughs> he's the one looking for the lost sheep of his fold amen christianity is for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son god is the one seeking is the one he said he, jesus was saying he said go he said i've come to i've come to seek and save the lost sheep of israel is is the one seeking is the one looking for those of his children who are lost lost to sin lost to satan christianity is not about a uh, war well, you know how can we find god it's about god finding us because we are it's not the one who is lost <laughs> we are the ones we are the ones who need to be found there's nothing like uh, if you hear people say i found god god is not lost you were the one who was lost he found you he found you okay so christianity is totally different is completely different from religion all right god so much loves us that he can't just afford to lose us to the devil if you, you know since the fall of man at the garden of eden you remember when adam and eve sinned god said they should not eat one fruit and they decided to eat it based on the suggestion of the devil himself and they did and man fell man fell from relationship with god man fell you no know, man was banished from god's presence they were taken out of the garden of eden you know the story you can go and read it in genesis 1 2 and 3 okay but since the fall of man because of who god is his loving nature being the father he had been making several efforts to get man back to himself god is of a purer eyes than to behold iniquity god doesn't like in fact he can't stand looking at sin but he loves sinners so he had been working to get rid of sin so that sinners can find their ways back to him without sin so the relationship will continue and he made several efforts throughout the ages to get man back to himself he gave them laws you know they could that didn't work he gave them judges he sent them kings he sent prophets all to no avail because the issue of sin had not yet been settled it has not been said to law will tell you if you do this this is the penalty that's the law but law doesn't give you power not to do not to not to go against it law will tell you if you still uh probably you are going to be killed you're going to be jailed they're going to do this to you do, do, do that to you that's the law that's the consequence but law doesn't provide you with means by which you will not fall into that sin of stealing and that made law weak law is like telling me uh you know showing me in the mirror you know something is wrong with my face something is wrong with my maybe my the color of my shirt and it doesn't do anything about it So it's just it just gives you awareness of sin it didn't work because sin had not been the, the issue of sin had not been settled it was then god sent his only begotten son jesus christ as the final blow to satan and sin and jesus did a very good job at the cross of calvary and reconciled the whole world back to the father for as many as who believe in him and as a result of this finished work of christ we no longer live by the law 
keeping all manners of rules as if we are slaves. We have been adopted into the very family of God and we are now sons and daughters. Hallelujah. If I Romans 8 15, if you look at Romans chapter 8, verse 15, according to New Living Translation, NLT says, So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you are you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Did you see that? Now we call him Abba Father. Abba Father. Abba Father is like saying, Dear Dad. It's like saying daddy. You don't call someone daddy when there's no relationship. He has adopted us into his family. He found us eventually. So we are no longer afraid of God's judgment because the full price for our sins has been paid. All we do now is fellowship with our daddy in heaven and simply carry out his will, I mean his instructions on earth. That's what we do. And that's not religion. That's relationship. That is relationship. We have a dad. A dad is in heaven. We speak to him in prayer. We worship him in songs. You know, we pray to him. He answers us. We have relationship with our father in heaven. Jesus Christ was teaching when he was on earth. His disciples how to pray. He said when they want to, when they want to pray, they should start by saying, Our father who art in heaven. You don't call somebody father when there is no father to son or father to daughter relationship. Our father, he didn't say our boss. He didn't say our employer. Our father. There is relationship now. Jesus had made it possible. Hallelujah. So, Christianity is relationship with God. And it has to do with our lifestyle on earth. Our kingdom lifestyle here. We live, we live by the dictates of the principles of God. We live as members of God's family. And we carry out the will of God here on earth as his representatives. So religion does not release you from bondage. In fact, it it increases your level of bondage. If you allow me to say that. It doesn't guarantee liberation. You are bound. Because your life's your life is full of rules, religious rules. Oh, it's time of uh, you know once the moon is like this, you have to be like this. One, this one, you are you are in bondage. You are not free, no freedom. Because you are in religion. There's only one fellow who can set you free, Jesus Christ, and that's the head of the church. So you got to be a Christian. You got to you got to accept the lordship of Jesus Christ over your life to be able to understand what true freedom really means. If 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 you are saying you are free without Jesus, you don't know what freedom is. You are not. If the Son shall set you free, that's the only time you can be free indeed. John 8:36 The scriptures cannot be broken. It's important. So you need to understand, you know, you know, having religious uh, attitude, you know, trying to do this, trying to do that, trying to look for God. If that's what you are doing, you are not in a relationship and you are not free. You are in bondage. We are looking at the bondage of religion. Bondage of religion. Now, if what you want, if your desire, if your goal in life is just to be to feel busy, to you just want to be busy so that you can feel good or feel spiritual, then go for religion. Go for religion. You want to be able to boast and say, you know, last week out of ten commandments, I kept nine. You know, you know, people should clap for you. You want to be busy. You know, you want to feel busy practicing certain things, obeying some rules, trying to sacrifice this, sacrifice that, try to, you know, you just, 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 you want to feel spiritual, you want to feel good as if you are really, 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 really looking for God. Then go for religion and your bondage continues. Just know that no matter how good you feel in religion, you are still in bondage because no man and i repeat no man can please god through self righteousness or by keeping the law no man shall be justified before god just by practicing self righteousness or keeping some laws 
Look at Romans chapter 3. I'll read 20 to 22 for you. Romans 3, 20 to 22. I can I will read it for I'll read it from uh, NIV. New International Version. It says, it, it says, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight. You can read it up. No one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. No one means no bishop, no pastor, nobody. No one will be declared righteous in God's sight just by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin, like I told you earlier. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. To all who believe. Black or white, you know, wherever you are from, to all who believe. That's the freedom we are saying. You are given the power to become a child of God just because you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. You accept the Lordship of Jesus. You become a child of God. You have been found. Your job is just to continue having fellowship like Adam was having in Eden before the fall. Look at Isaiah 64, 6. Isaiah 64, 6, according to NLT, says, We are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. Like autumn leaves, we wither and fall, and our sins sweep us away like the wind. Is that the kind of life you want to live? Self righteousness? Say last week, I, I, I last week I, I made sure out of ten commandments I kept four. Is that what we are talking about? Or relationship with Jesus, Father to Son, talking to God, God talking to you, having having wonderful time in God's presence, enjoying this Christianity, the, the, this this journey of Christianity. You are enjoying yourself with God. Adam was enjoying himself in the garden of Eden before the fall. That's the relationship. The Bible said God will come down at the cool of the day. He will talk with Abraham, you know. I mean, uh, Adam, they were discussing, talking about the animals, the plants. You know, everything was beautiful. That is restoration. That's where God is restoring man to. Relationship. Where you can talk to God, God can talk to you. That's freedom. The veil is torn. You can go straight to the Father now. During the law, you have to go through one high priest. Somebody has to like, you know, help you connect to God. You don't do that no more. You don't need anybody to help you connect to God. Say, uh, there's one man somewhere. If I bring one sacrifice, he will help me find out, you know, what, what God is saying. No, in this, this dispensation, not at all. Not at all. There's Jesus now. The veil is torn. The moment... He was crucified. The moment he shouted on the cross, gave up the ghost, the veil, the veil to the temple got torn. Now we have access to the Holy of Holies. You can go to God directly. All you need to do once you say, Father, in Jesus' name, life and direct, you are before the throne of grace. Straight to God. No intermediary. No, uh, let's go and meet one man, one priest, one pastor, one prophet. We help us find out. No. You talk to God directly. What freedom is greater than that? There's something going on in your life. You want to find out what is the will of God concerning this thing. You want to know what's God's plan concerning this thing. What's God, what's God thinking about this thing? I want, to, I want to know the thought of God. You talk to God. Lord God, what are you thinking concerning this matter directly? And he's going to talk to you. How did I know? Jeremiah 33, 3, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, he said, Call unto me, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. That's what he said. He didn't say, I will send one prophet and priest to come and show you great and mighty. Call, you should come to me. Talk to me. Give me a phone call. If you want me to say it like that, talk to me directly, and I'm going to answer you. I'm going to show you great and mighty things you know. No, I'm going to talk to you about your destiny. I'm going to talk to you about your future. I'm going to talk to you about your marriage. I'm going to talk to you about your job, about any aspect of your life. There's nothing God does not know and there's nothing God cannot share with you if you are in relationship with him. 
to me that's freedom not that I have to kill one cow or kill one goat to be able to find out if we can appease God, if we allow us to draw closer. Someone say, no, one goat is not enough. Go and bring four more goats. You know, God is angry. Oh, Lord God, don't be angry. I will bring you goats in this dispensation. What bondage is greater than that? When you can just say, Father, in Jesus' name, as everything is taken care of. Angels are deployed at your, at your command. See, brethren, if you are still in religion, you are in danger. You are in grave danger. Religion is bondage. That's what the people, that's what all the high priests and all the chief priests and scribes of the time of Jesus, that's what they could not understand. That's why they had to crucify Jesus. They didn't even know they were fulfilling the plan of God though. But they couldn't relate with the teachings of Jesus. They were used to bondage that one messiah talking about freedom they couldn't take it in and re- religion is always the enemy of christianity not not even not even what you think it is it is people who are trying to be religious those are the people who usually even persecute those who are practicing the real christianity because they don't understand some people find it hard to believe how can god forgive just like that how can god just forgive you for what you know, it should be eye for an eye. It should be tooth for tooth. You should, you, you, know, you do this, God should kill you. They can't understand how God can be merciful. When the Lord Jesus said, go and learn what this means, that I desire mercy more than sacrifice. When are we going to start reading our Bibles? It's important. So if you want to feel good, go for religion. But know that all you're feeling good we keep you in bondage however if you really if you really desire a life of total freedom then you need to invite jesus into your life you have not done so already and let him direct all your affairs let jesus be the head of your life let him govern your life you can look at that john 8 2 to 36 that's what the bible says if you continue in my way say you will know the truth and the truth will make you free if you allow the son of god to set you free you will be free indeed so no jesus no freedom is the only one who can give you the true meaning of freedom praise the name of the lord and if you want to do that now you want to have relationship with jesus christ this will be the best moment. You should come out of all these religious practices and come and get the real thing. Come to the fountain of life and drink directly from the source. So you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ? You want to enjoy freedom? You're going to say this prayer after me now. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. And that's why I need your salvation. Please come into my life today wash away all my sins and set me free from every bondage that sin has attracted into my life I confess you as my Lord and Savior today please write my name in the book of life and help me to live for you alone from now onward also fill me with your Holy Spirit and don't let me ever become a powerless Christian thank you Jesus for saving me Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I would thank you for your word you have sent to us today. Thanks for opening our eyes to see that religion is all about bondage. But freedom is only present in Christ Jesus. Thanks for those of us you have set free. And thanks for this, your children, you are setting free now. Lord, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. These your children who have decided to accept the Lordship of Jesus over their lives. We say, Lord, accept them in the Beloved wipe away all their sins wash them all away erase their name from the book of death and write their names in the book of life beginning from now let them begin let them enjoy the true meaning of freedom in the name of jesus thank you father for answering our prayers in jesus mighty name we pray amen hallelujah well if you said that prayer i want to congratulate you you are now born again all things have passed away you're a new creature and all things have become new you are now you are now free your job is just to begin to understand how to relate with god and how to maintain your freedom so you don't lose it 
and that's what I want to encourage you to study your Bible, learn about the will of God. What does God want for you? Read the Gospels, read the New Testament, read the Word of God. Ask people around you for explanation, those who know about the Word of God, you know. And if you want, if you also want some resources that can help you become well established in the Lord, just visit our website. There are a lot of them there. Visit our website at www.glom.org, www.glom.org. There are all manners of wonderful materials and resources that, that can help you become well established in the Lord. We also want to encourage you to join um, other believers, you know, in fellowship. That's one thing that can help you grow in the things of God. So if you want, you can be part of our weekly online Bible study. Uh, we hold that every Sunday, 5 to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. All you need to do is to click on the banner right on top of the home page of the website, and that will bring you straight to the meeting room. We hold it via Zoom application every sunday 5 to 6 p.m mountain time uh, it will be wonderful to have you there so that you can learn more about the word of god and have opportunity to share and also ask questions uh also feel free to follow us on social media like i said earlier on uh check us out and like our pages on um, facebook twitter instagram connect with us on linkedin as well so you can keep receiving the important spiritual updates and resources as they become available uh, and if you want to reach out to us for anything at all just send us an email via info at glam.org info at glam.org or simply uh, send us a voice message using the same platform you are using to listen now as you do all this the lord will bless you mightily in the name of jesus so thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of glam podcast if you have been blessed by this particular episode or probably the previous ones please feel free to share with others around you so that they also can be particulars of what the lord is doing via this channel it's a prayer that we will all have testimonies in the name of Jesus. We'll be here again next week for yet another uh, episode if the Lord has not returned. Until then, next week, keep enjoying your freedom in Christ Jesus. God bless you. Bye.